Welcome. The following technical support video will highlight the new features that come with the Print From RIP application from Multi-RIP GP direct to garment RIP software. You want to start by opening up the Multi-RIP GP blue and gray RIP interface window. And go up to the top, click on the file link, and go down to create print job. What that's going to do is it's going to launch the print from application. We'll begin by looking at the predefined settings in the top right corner. Multi-RIP GP will run the 1800, 1900, 2200, 2100, 4800, and 4880 based direct-to-garment printers with other printers to come in the future. In the example that we're going to do, we're going to use a 4800 based printer to print white ink on a black cotton shirt, the white ink at a 1440 base by 1440 with a 720 color layer on top of it. So go ahead and select that. You've noticed that our platen size just changed as well. So we'll click on the printer and print area and we'll look at it. You can tell we're using the Multi-RIP 48X0 which is the same number that's up here at the top. It's automatically put our output queue uh, to the one that matches up with the 4800 printer. Our platen size was predefined and notice it's the 17 by 21 platen size. If you go to the print settings, you'll notice we're running with the black cotton which shows up in the name as well. The 720 by 720 is going to be our color layer and the 1440 by 1440 is going to be our white layer that we have in there. So all of that settings just happen with a click of one predefined settings. If you want, you can also create your own settings by manipulating with the current ones, going file and just saving the current settings. You can also save the current settings as a new name if you want and manage your settings as well. Once you have that done, then you can begin to work on the other three tabs, your artwork, your color settings, and your whiting tabs. Click on the artwork tab and then we're going to need to go and import in some artwork. So we begin by going to File, come down to Import Graphic, and we're going to bring in a graphic. The graphic we're going to bring in is a Chrome Skull, comes from Great Dane Graphics. So we'll just go ahead and import it in. Let's go ahead and put it in. We can now just click on the graphic and then we can manipulate the graphic click on the link and allow it to expand the size of the graphic. If we want, we can use the center horizontal button to center it and the center vertical button as well. There's also a rotation, both counterclockwise and clockwise, which will allow you to rotate the graphic if you're using a multiple printer setup. I'll go ahead and show you how to do that by just clicking on the rotate. Again, it goes ahead and drops it over there. Once we have that set up, we can then also size it and we can center it. Now what we can also do is we can go and we can import in another graphic as well. This is something that's unique with the Multi-RIP GP print from. So in this case we'll turn around and we're going to import in a basketball graphic from Great Dane Graphics. Notice that this one does not have a transparent background but runs with a green background. The important thing to notice about this is how when we get to our white and control tab how we're able to manipulate it. So what I'm going to do is first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate counterclockwise as well. Since we had both of them highlighted, it actually rotated both of those. And I wanted to do that just to show you that you have to be somewhat careful. So I'll just go ahead and rotate that one back and now you'll have both of them. You just want to position them where you need it. Now you can now go to the whiting controls. With the whiting controls, it gives you the ability to preview what the graphic is going to look like on your screen prior to sending it to the RIP. In the current position, if we go up to the top and click on it, you notice we only have a color. We do not have a white or a white highlight layer created at this point. If we click on the preview, you're not going to be able to see anything. And that's because the direct to garment inks are transparent unless you drop a white underbase. So what we'll start off with is we're going to take our transparent graphic that we have with the chrome skull. We're going to go to our white ink layer, 
and underneath the white ink layer, we're going to use transparency to detect background. There are several other ones here that we can use. Later on, we'll use the background color for our exploding basketball. And there are also several other layers you can use, and there are different videos that explain these. What you can then do is choose a slide. And the slider, the farther right you go, the higher the percentage of white ink we're going to drop down. The farther to the left, the less white ink will do, which means the shirt will not be able to hold as much of the color. You can also choose whether you want to put white ink underneath the black, which is something that I prefer to do. And then you can choose whether you want to keep the black ink in the shirt or not. If you're going to put white ink underneath black, you want to keep the black ink. It's the only way to run with it. So we'll go ahead from there and we'll just go ahead and click our Create button. This is now going to create the white ink underneath the chrome skull. We can then go up to the top, click on the preview, and we'll notice how the chrome skull shows up. Now, obviously our second graphic, which we haven't done at this point, does not show up. So we'll go down, click on our basketball. We're going to change to use the background color. What that's going to do is it's going to take the graphic that shows up in the top left corner, and whatever that first color pixel is, it's going to remove it from the background and put a white ink pixel based on the grayscale that white ink pixel under every other color that it can find. So once we have that set up, we can also at this point I will show you how the remove the black ink will work on this graphic because we're going to want to remove the black ink in the actual stripes of the basketball since we're putting this onto a black shirt. So we'll click on that and you're going to watch the graphic change with the gray green background being pulled out. In this case you'll notice how the black ink down here on the stripes of the basketball has been removed. It looks weird here but when we go to click on the preview button you'll notice how the graphics look. We've well, just used two different white layer generators to develop the different ones. We can go and click on the white ink and you'll see the different white ink bases that are there. Remembering that we were putting a little bit of white ink underneath the black areas because it's just not as needed as much but I prefer to put some. And in this case we're actually using the black ink uh, or the black of the shirt and removing the black ink for it which would give us our preview of this. Then, then the final thing we can do is we can go and look at our color settings we have anything you want to lighten something up or brighten something up as well you can just click on the graphic and let's brighten this up a little bit this is cumulative so if you want after you click on the apply button you'll watch it brighten up on our screen if we wanted to move it back we'd have to move it past the normal actually to here to get it back to our starting point since it is a cumulative effect once we're ready at this point all we have to do is go ahead and click OK and what it's going to do is it's going to begin to process the job and put it into the RIP application. That's all it really takes for using the multi-RIP print from RIP application. If you have additional questions please feel free to contact your distributor or visit www.multirip.com and click on the frequently asked questions page. Thank you.